All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I wanted to do a bit of an update video on the algae media. As you can see, the algae is doing fine. It's alive and well. And in fact, I'm just about ready to expand the culture once again. But before I do that, I need to make a note of a few things. First of all, several people mentioned that there was a lot of copper in my mix. And yeah, I went and looked at some things. There should have been a zero there. I must have copied it down wrong or something because I ended up with 10 times the amount of copper. And like, I had it right on this solution here. But yeah, for, for whatever reason, I ended up with way too much copper. But the uh, algae didn't mind it at all, as you can see. And the reason for that is the high, high pH, the high quantity of carbonate, causes the copper to be very insoluble. It would form copper carbonate, or malachite, which is only very slightly soluble in water. So I could have added 10 times as much, 100 times as much. It really wouldn't make a difference because it would all precipitate from solution and just be additional sediment on the bottom of the container with it not dissolved into a solution, it doesn't harm the algae. An algae growing in water that doesn't contain all that carbonate, which doesn't have such a high pH, might have a problem. In fact, copper sulfate is used as a algicide in some applications. It's one of those things where it is necessary for life. Life cannot exist without copper, but too much is toxic. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to redo the bulk nutrient solution. And the reason for that is that a lot of my nutrients have settled out on the bottom here. You can see this white precipitate. That is mostly calcium sulfate, magnesium phosphate, that sort of thing. Stuff which has a low solubility. Uh, in the full dilution, when I've got the algae media ready for the algae, those are soluble enough that they would be dissolved, at least mostly, into the solution. But with it concentrated like this, most of them will be settled out. Now, I've never really saw this as a problem, because when you add the extra water, they should just re-dissolve. And given enough time and sufficient stirring, that is the case. But people who work on hydroponic systems have pointed out to me that once the crystals form, and settle out a solution, they're much more difficult to get back in. First of all, you're going to need that stirring, because if it's settled out at the bottom, it's going to be interacting with a lot less liquid, so it's going to dissolve very slowly. But also, crystals, once formed, are hard to unform. It actually is way I'm using the amorphous silica. You see, this is silica, which is in a very fine, porous state. It's not crystalline. It's kind of like the difference between a pile of Legos, which are kind of loosely packed, versus a Lego block. So this would be like a quartz crystal. So this would be like a piece of sand that was ground up really small. You can see water, as the molecules are bouncing around, can pull bits of silicon dioxide off of a pile of non-crystalline silica much more easily then it can pull it off of something that is locked together into a crystal. You see, it's you know, much more difficult to pull these off. And it's the same thing for pretty much all crystals. So once the calcium sulfate forms, it's more difficult to break it back apart. So it is beneficial to not form it in the first place. Again, this algae doesn't really care if there's a little bit less calcium than normal it just lives with it. Plus, I'm stirring it pretty well, so it does dissolve eventually. But I think I would like to have my solutions be better. So let me go through and weigh everything out again. Be similar to what I did last time, only this time I'm going to mix them together a little bit differently. And also make sure I got the right value for copper. Oh no. Cat's stealing my Legos. <laughs> yeah, you need to go back upstairs. 
trying to be messing with the chemicals, yeah, you're gonna cut a problem. Yeah. Come on. There we go. See, that's much less copper sulfate. And I guess I could leave the copper sulfate a high concentration. It doesn't hurt this algae. But I kind of want to use the solution for other algaes as well. So I think it's best to go ahead and redo it with the correct amount of copper. Okay, so I've weighed out all the ingredients for the trace element solution. You can see, much less copper this time. You might also notice that I have omitted the calcium fluoride and the silica this time. And that's not because uh, fluoride is super dangerous and you shouldn't have it in your diet at all. Uh, the reason is that it's all ending up on the bottom of the container here. The solubility for these two is very low, and so given how concentrated this solution is, the amount that's actually going to be ending up in my final media is tiny. It would be much more sensible to add them to the water I'm using. And this algae doesn't really need them anyway. The silica, for instance, is really only useful for if you're growing diatoms. And the fluoride, of course, is really only useful for your teeth. Which, uh, if you're like me, and you grew up drinking mainly bottled water and having an allergy to minty toothpaste, fluoride is absolutely necessary. But, of course, it does make a lot more sense to rub it on your teeth directly rather than adding it to your food. But it doesn't hurt to have it on your food in tiny amounts. Like many things here, it is necessary, but large amounts are toxic. And there it is, much less blue. Honestly, the color should have been a tip off. It's kind of embarrassing that I missed it, but you can see it is much more clear. Very little sediment in this one. <laughs> All right, now let's work on the uh, bulk nutrient, which I'll probably split into two parts. The AB thing that you've probably seen if you've done hydroponic stuff. And there's the ingredients for the bulk solutions weighed out. Now I've made a few changes from the last time. Uh, first, I'm using just magnesium chloride instead of magnesium sulfate. This will decrease the amount of sulfate, so to compensate I've increased the portion of potassium sulfate over here using 112 grams instead of 100 grams even. And I did run out of ammonium phosphate, so I am using potassium phosphate. So the amount of potassium in my solutions will be higher than it was last time, but a little extra potassium isn't going to hurt the algae. Uh, I should mention the sodium chloride. I'm also using a little bit less of that because I've got chloride in the magnesium. And when people asked if this was iodized salt. This is not iodized salt. If you're using iodized salt, you probably wouldn't need iodine in the trace element solution. And I should also mention this contains calcium silicate. So that's uh, calcium and silica as well. So that I am actually going to end up with silica in my solution. This also contains calcium. So. How am I going to separate these now? I need to make two solutions. Because if I have the calcium combined with the sulfate, it's going to precipitate calcium sulfate. If it combines with the phosphate, it's going to precipitate calcium phosphate. So we want to keep these separate. also want to keep the magnesium separate from the phosphorus. And the salt contains calcium as well, so I want to keep that separate. So I think I'm going to separate them like this. I have the, pretty much the NPK in one solution and the iron, magnesium, calcium, and chloride in the other solution. Distilled water. And there's my three bottles, the three solutions. 
I decided to name them major for the major elements, minor, minor elements, and trace for the trace elements. Uh, still dissolving. In fact, this one's gotten quite cold. This one stayed the same temperature, and this one, well, it wasn't enough to really change the temperature anyway. It's all that uh, sodium nitrate in there dissolving. <laughs> so yeah. I could probably have made this into two solutions if I uh, put some of these in there and some in there and less amount, of course, but I kind of like having them separated into three separate groups. All right, let me let this finish dissolving and we can make the algae solution and get those bulked up. So a note on using multivitamins instead of the trace elements that are in their pure form. Uh, this does contain a lot of uh, binders and essentially sugars and stuff that greatly increase the chances of growing mold or unwanted bacteria. So it's not ideal. I'd avoid it if possible, but I have used them and it does work. Just you have to take a little bit more precautions with uh, keeping everything clean and making sure to sterilize everything. There it is, all dissolved. Very little sediment, only what is from not being pure chemicals. And now, I'm ready to make the media. So, I've got 12 liters of water. I'm going to add 250 milliliters of each of these. 12 milliliters of this, and 204 grams of baking soda. Sieving the algae again to get rid of the clumps and the dead algae. Now the dead algae is more likely to get caught by the screen because the spiral form of the algae gets tangled up and without being alive to untangle themselves well it remains as a clumpy form. Okay, now I'll just add this into the media which is now finished. And there is the final expanded culture. I've also got a little sample here, just in case I did something horribly wrong. That should work. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.